Well, welcome to another program where we try to uh, raise awareness for conditions and events that are going on in South Florida and everything that affects all of the uh, residents of uh, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. And uh, every 90 minutes, believe it or not, someone is diagnosed with ALS, which uh, formerly was known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It is uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and we're going to talk about that today as it relates to uh, South Florida. There's an event coming up as well, so we want to make sure we get that information in and uh, have our audience Come on by and participate in that. And here in the studio with us in the program is Tiffany Geiger. She's the regional development manager for um, the ALS uh, Society here in South Florida. Welcome to the program, Tiffany. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you today. I want you to talk a little bit about what's coming up in, in a couple of weeks, which is the walk to defeat ALS, and we'll get to that in a minute. Also joining us on the phone from uh, the Tampa area is Alyssa Gutierrez, Director of Marketing Communications for the ALS Florida Chapter. How are you, Alyssa? Very well, thank you. Thanks for being on. Now, I'm learning so much uh, doing this program, this public affairs program, and it's uh, really enlightening me a lot. And uh, today is a a topic that I've heard about a lot. I mean, Lou Gehrig is, of course, a classic baseball player who goes back many, many years, and this um, condition has changed names over the years. But tell us a little bit about, Alyssa, tell us a little bit about Lou Gehrig's disease or or ALS and what it is, and uh, explain it to us a little bit, if you would. Sure. ALS is a progressive neurodegenerative disease that kills motor neurons. Um, It robs a person of the ability to walk, talk, eat, and eventually breathe. Um, Most people with ALS become paralyzed when the motor neuron cells in their brain and spinal cord die, and this results in the muscles wasting away. And if you can imagine, almost everything you do um, during your day involves some sort of muscle. the ALL, ALS Association Florida Chapter, we pretty much cover all the bases for people living with ALS in the state of Florida. Um, this is an incredibly expensive disease. It costs upwards of $250,000 a year because when people become paralyzed, medical equipment and assistive technology become an everyday part of their lives. Unfortunately, uh, Lou Gehrig was diagnosed in 1939 we're coming on the 75th anniversary, and nothing has really changed since that time. There's still no known cause, no treatment, and no cure for ALS, and it's always fatal. So the walk to defeat ALS that Tiffany's going to talk about is a really important um, part of how we raise funds to take care of patients who are living with this disease in the state of Florida, and specifically South Florida. Now, what age does someone come up with uh, this condition? Is, is it something that begins in children, or can you enlighten no, us a little bit? No, uh, we have very few recorded um, instances of ALS um, striking people in their extreme youth. Um, we have more and more people in their 20s and 30s that are being diagnosed, uh, but most people uh, become diagnosed with this disease post age 50. But it does, it it really, uh, ALS knows no uh, racial backgrounds, no ethnicities. It strikes anyone at any time. Um, And really, we don't know, you know, what the secret is, the mystery to why it it attacks people. Now, does it go back just as far as Lou Gehrig, or is it a condition that's been possibly been around before that? I'm just trying to think if maybe there was technology to blame or something that happened around that period of time. You know, um, we started recording instances of ALS, I think, as far back as the Renaissance, um, and they really have not been able to figure out what happens, what goes wrong in a body so that people, um, if I can put it in simple terms, ALS seems to be more than just one disease. Um, It all has the same effect. People live only two to five years. It's always fatal. But they're trying to figure out what exactly goes wrong in a person's body that creates this, you know, paralysis and and the death of the motor neurons. Um, But we are learning more and more every year. And we recently, in 2012, had a breakthrough, which ALS researchers are calling a game changer. It happened right here in Florida at the Mayo in Jacksonville. And they were able to isolate an abnormal gene that's responsible for 90% of the cases of familial ALS, which is the genetic form of the disease. Why did they change the name from Lou Gehrig's disease? Well, it never was called Lou Gehrig's disease. It's always been 
amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, but because Lou Gehrig was the first well-known person um, to have the disease, they refer to it as the disease that Lou Gehrig has or Lou Gehrig's disease, and the name just stuck. So it is commonly still referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease. And I do want to ask uh, you, Tiffany, about the walk, and then I want to have some more questions for Alyssa. But give us a little information on the walk to defeat ALS, which is going to happen uh, here in South Florida in just under a month. So our Broward, Broward Miami-Dade Walk to Defeat ALS is the chapter's national signature fundraising event. It's responsible for raising a majority of the funds that we are able to use to fund research and program service, program and patient services throughout the state. Um, like you said, our Broward Miami-Dade Walk to Defeat ALS will be March 1st at 8.30 a.m. at Vista View Park in Davie. When someone is um, contracted a- ALS, what is the first thing that needs to be done, Alyssa, as far as uh, caretaking and, and making them comfortable and, and trying to keep them prolong their life sure. as much? Sure. Well, the first thing we ask is that they go to our website, which is www.alsa fl.org and register with our chapter. Um, At that point, they will be connected with a patient services um, coordinator who will help them navigate through, you know, the often very, very hard to understand insurance red tape. Um, If they're a military veteran, and I'm not sure if you know, but military veterans are twice as likely to be diagnosed with ALS. will help them, you know, uh, cut through the red tape of, uh, you know, some of the government insurance processes and things of that nature. The more that you know, um, the easier it will be, I think, to live with this disease. And, and the Florida chapter of the ALS Association, we really are focused on giving people quality of life um, when they're diagnosed with something as horrific as ALS. So when someone comes up with this disease and uh, it's affecting them, what is the first um, symptom that they're going to have? Well, it really depends. It really depends. There are different types um, of ALS, um, and that affects how the onset will occur. Many people uh, report that they weren't able to close a paper clip with their fingertips, that they started to lose um, their fine motor skills. Uh, Other people report that they started tripping over their own feet. Um, and we're losing, you know, the muscles in their legs and um, feet. So it really depends on how the onset begins, but it seems to progress rather quickly in most people depending on, uh, you know, when it started. It's, it's a very difficult disease to be diagnosed with. There is not one single test to determine if you have ALS. Um, a neurologist has to go through a battery of tests to basically rule out everything else. Um, And the end result is that many people are not diagnosed very quickly. So while they're waiting, you know, for the second, third, fourth opinion, the disease is progressing. Where is research being conducted in in the state of Florida and specifically maybe even in South Florida? Is it, you mentioned the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, but is is that one of the, the pinpoints? Uh, The Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville is one of our ALS centers of excellence, and we also have in South Florida the Kucinich ALS uh, Clinic and Research Facility at the University of Miami, which is doing amazing things. Um, They're on the forefront of a lot of really interesting research. Um, Many uh, of their studies and their research projects are funded by the ALS Association Florida chapter and the South Florida Walk. Uh, We also have the USF Clinic in Tampa and several other uh, smaller ALS clinics uh, in Fort Myers and Gainesville um, that also take care of ALS patients. You talked about a breakthrough in 2012. Uh, this, was this a surprise, or was there research being done, and then they discovered this commonality, this gene that you mentioned? And if so, um, how are they able to go back and look over people who have um, passed away or who currently uh, are suffering with ALS. How are they able to compare that to what's happening today? Well, you know, this was one, uh, 2011 seemed to be a a landmark year for ALS research. This was one of two uh, groundbreaking uh, research developments that happened. The one that happened at the Mayo in Jacksonville, they were doing a study on familial ALS. That's the genetic form. Um, It's a, a a more rare form of ALS. 